Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Tuesday, January the 25th, 2022. The markets continued to move lower today with the S&P not necessarily leading the way, but definitely getting hit pretty hard. Now, let's try to update this picture. Now, we remain in the process and my opinion of that we're dropping in the initial minor wave, a minor degree, five wave decline. Yesterday's lows completed minor wave three. As I left it last night, the rally, the intense, strong, beautiful rally up off that low to the closing highs at 44.06, could have been all of way four. Then today we got an initial three wave decline, which took us back below 4,300. But then the market once again made an attempt, and this one was more Dow based than uh, the other three indexes. But the S&P rallied back above 4,400, finishing up at 4,400.50. Now, what this could be is, again, that endpoint for this fourth wave. And how that would work is that this rally yesterday was wave A of four. This is wave B of four. And this was wave C of four, and it ended in a failure. Now, when a market ends a move in a failure, whether it's a C wave or a fifth wave, it is showing weakness towards the opposite trend. So in other words, it is showing weakness and vulnerability to the downside because the market could not get up and move above 44.10, even though it broke above the hourly 50 right there. Let me open that up so we can see it a little bit cleaner. No, that's not gonna work. Oh, and it did. There you go. That it, it broke that 50 on the way up. We got a little bit of extra acceleration. And on the way down, we got more acceleration, but to the downside. Then it broke below the 20. And then we got more acceleration to the downside. Now, what's in store? In fact, what I am going to do, because I've now added that additional, I am going to put before right here as soon as i can get my computer to cooperate with me come on oh, yeah, yeah. my poor computer gets so slow so um and now i'm freight freezing come on there we go this time yes let's add that going boy we're really slow Whee. I better get a new computer, folks. Um, <laughs> let's hope this decline continues and I can make enough to buy a new computer. I joke. That's a joke. Um, we're going to go with the four. And I'm going to put it right there, <clears throat> which then suggests that we are in the minor fifth wave down to complete this first five waves down on the hourly chart which again is going to give us confirmation that indeed the highs back at, at uh, 4808.50 completed all of those sequences that I've labeled up there. And that is the minor degree fifth, the intermediate degree fifth, the primary degree fifth, and the cycle degree fifth. So we are in those initial stages of a much stronger, longer term corrective phase. I have been discussing it for over six months and whether it gets delayed or whether it gets pushed out or however the market wants to react does not take away that it is waiting to happen. And when the market fights that, it, it ends up having to succumb to it eventually. And that's kind of what we're seeing. 
or we get additional evidence, we get additional proof that being bullish is not the right thing. Our earnings reports are not coming out stellar. We're getting a lot of forward guidance. I mean, they're not reporting bad earnings for the year or bad earnings for the fourth quarter. They're, they're providing forward guidance discussing a slowdown, discussing problems that we have in different areas. So when the corporate world is beginning to catch on that things are changing here, then in all honesty, they come forward to say, this is what the situation is. And maybe we need to make some adjustments to what we think we're gonna be able to do or how they intend to do it. Okay, so that being said, Microsoft reported this afternoon, the stock finished down almost $8, regular session, finished at 288, almost 50, 288.50 we'll call it. Earnings came out, they weren't that bad as far as earnings, what they earned for the fourth quarter. But forward guidance began to just force this collapse. So right now, while they're trying to settle out the score and determine how they want to put Microsoft overnight as people walk in and buy and what they need, they're getting flat or whatever the situation is that uh, traders will do, the <clears throat> Microsoft is down an additional $14. And it's been a little bit more, about $15, $16, and then it bounces back a little bit, and then they take it down. So again, this is additional evidence on what is likely to be expected from the balance of our major tech companies, such as Apple, Amazon, AMD, AMAT, Facebook, Google, PayPal, Tesla. You know, so we have chip companies that have to report. And you know, folks, it really does not suggest that these are bad companies. They're all really solid companies and they have way more money to sit out and be able to survive a downturn economically or a downturn in the market. So I don't have any bad will towards that, you know, that things are gonna get so severe that these companies are gonna get closed down. I don't necessarily see that. But I do see the necessity that we need to correct that the exuberance, that, that the upside and the over-evaluation on the hope of women of prayer of continued gigantic earnings blowing the windows out once a quarter that we have seen from Google, we've seen from Apple, we've seen from Microsoft, we've seen from Tesla, et cetera, et cetera. That I think is now being wound down and part of it is, of course, because of the Fed saying, we got to tighten. We have inflation that's kind of running out of control right now. We got to get a grip on it, et cetera, et cetera. So what does that mean for us? Correction. Now, if indeed this marked the completion point for wave four, and we are in this fifth wave, I've now added the extensions for a fifth wave. Now, a fifth wave on a Fibonacci basis would then be compared and matched against the third wave. The most common level for a fifth wave is that it will be 0.618 or about 61.8% the length of the third wave. That's sitting down here at 4,075. But if this gets going, we already know that wave, wave three is the longest wave, so that's a good thing, but it can equal it, and that's a 38.73. So we've got some bigger, bigger downside staring us in the face. So initially, we do have support at 42, what is that number? Can't see it. 42 down here. 4276. Then we have 4199 down to 4185. We need to break below 4212. 
to because the fifth wave would be expected to break below the third wave. And then we have that, and then we have our support at 41.99 down to 41.85, then we have 41.37, then the 618 at 40.75. We have 70.5 at 40.29. So we've got a great zone right here, which may contain the whole move and set us up for a wave two rally. Now, this is gonna end up being minor wave one, excuse me, intermediate wave one. Then we, uh, out of the first larger five down. Because don't forget, if indeed we're correcting all the way up to a cycle level, so if a cycle level, that means that we've got to have an ABC on a primary level. So on the primary level, if we're, if we're working on that first wave, it could be five waves of intermediate degree. So again, the structure is still in formation. So we've got to figure that if the first wave down is five waves, if that's going to turn out to be intermediate wave A, fine. Then we're, then we're still looking for an intermediate B wave uh, advance. If it ends up being intermediate wave one, then we're still looking for an intermediate wave two advance, a three wave advance. So we're getting close to a point where we should be able to form a bottom and launch a solid rally off of it. And that rally then would We'll, we'll put in the Fibonacci expectations, the retracements for it, but I'm, it should be pretty solid and it should again provide enough volatility and enough movement to have the string of sweet, profitable trading days to continue. That's the good news. Now, as this thing moves down, I'm again going to talk about mindset. We must, as traders, get into a mindset where we're locking out all the noise and our focus is left to the market. So in other words, we can't get involved with what is causing this decline. What could make it go further? Leave that to the market. The market will pick up on all of that as necessary and will be translated into price movement. What as a trader, you want to be able to do is to play it technically because technically it is going to continue to follow through in the direction it's supposed to be going. Okay, so if it's going to rally, these moving averages are going to tell you this is a good rally, you're going to want to participate. But as it's declining, those same moving averages are going to tell you, oh, we're going down, the rally's over, you're going to want to participate. Now, Again, I trade off of a one, two, and a five minute chart. Those moving averages come more into play than they do on an hourly chart. Because again, here's the 200, here's the 50, here's the 20, the four, and the eight. They're all grouped together right now. The 20, the four, and the eight are grouped together. If they continue to slide and go lower, which it's going to because the market is, attend I believe, intending to head that way then we're going to see the 50 downturn. So they'll all be in alignment once again to go down. And that's the hourly chart. So if I go in and I'm going to start checking, let's start the 15 minute, just, just for the conversation. Same deal. We went up, broke on the 15 minute, broke above the 200, got a sweet little acceleration, came back down, broke below, got additional acceleration down, broke the 20, got more acceleration, broke the 50, that just tagged and boom, 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 boom. Moving averages do work and they tell you what's going to happen. We already can put into our minds if it breaks the moving averages going in one direction or the other, it puts the pressure on the direction that it's headed. If they're breaking to the downside, it's going to create acceleration as more traders see that and sell, because that's the signal they're getting. On the upside, when it starts to break above, it's going to bring in more pressure to the upside because that's where buyers get their signals. So why wouldn't we take that same signal? You're going to get the follow through. If you don't, you've got your stops in place. If it's a head fake, they're okay. You can make a little bit of money, or you got to stop in place. And if it comes and re breaks back above, 
you're out. So no, no harm, no foul. <clears throat> For tomorrow, I would expect that we're gonna to continue to head lower. Tomorrow's Fed day, though it may be slow. Somehow I don't think so, but it could be as we await those reports from the Fed. How much are they going to tighten? How much do that, does that interest rate get raised? So <clears throat> that's gonna hang out there and it will have an effect. We also have the tension of the possible war that's gonna happen in the Ukraine. Anything can be boom, news hit, boom, react. That's what I think we're confronting right now. And it can go in either direction. So we need to, as traders, be prepared and not wonder why, just react along with the market. And you do that by having the mindset that you're watching the price action. Your I trade this market technically, not fundamentally. I'm sorry, Microsoft, you didn't have such the best of earnings today and your forward guidance wasn't exactly what the market wanted to hear. Okay, that's fine. We're going down. I'm going to follow it. I'm going to look at my moving averages. I'm going to determine what I should be doing next. Now, I think we will continue to break down. Eventually, we should break below 42.12. When that occurs, here are our support levels, 41.99, 41.85. Then a break below that, we've got 41.37. A break below that widens this black hole, right? Again, look at the size of that sucker. We, that's how we have to go back to May and June to find price support for the market right now. That's how strong that rally was last year. <clears throat> now we're getting into that territory. So we have Fibonacci extensions or support at 41.37, 40.75, 40, 29, 39, 86. And wave five would be equal to wave three at 38, 74. Is it possible? Yes. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I'm just going to be paying attention to price action. So again, I'm just giving you both sides of this coin to tell you. If the market suddenly just stops, and starts to go up, well, it's got the 200, it's got the 20, it's got the 50, all going to be providing resistance. If it starts to break, don't get in the way. Their intent is to buy it. And I'd be looking for it to break 4,400. I'd be looking for it to break 4,011. I'd be looking for it to start raising up. And this would be price support, price resistance, excuse me, 4,587, 4,587. You should find some at 4,500, no doubt. Right there, 40, 4,480, there should be price resistance. But right now I'm looking for additional downside and for this to continue. That's where I'm gonna leave it. Trade smart, trade using the moving averages. Use the Fibonacci extensions, use the Elliott count. Have a great trading day tomorrow. The next update will be on Wednesday, the 26th.